Good morning students. Today we will be learning regarding the object oriented concepts. So the module 1 is regarding introduction to object oriented concepts. In this we will be learning regarding a review of structures, procedure oriented programming and object oriented programming system. So over here the syllabus of the object oriented concepts includes module 1 introduction to object oriented concepts where you will be learning regarding a review of structure procedure oriented program what do you mean by procedure oriented program object oriented program comparison between c and c plus plus as well as console input and output and then again with the function prototyping function overloading and then you'll be learning regarding the classes and objects so the module one is regarding introduction to the object oriented concepts which follow continuation of same concepts will be continued in the module two till here so which is the concepts of the object oriented concepts so over here the mo from module one till here you have one prescribed textbook that is textbook one Saurav Sahai Saurav Sahai so just for the one and a half module you have one textbook and then again next from the module two you'll be learning from uh, you will start learning the introduction to Java that is textbook two that is the Robert Shield so I'll show you the prescribed textbook in the next slide so this is regarding the second module is regarding classes and objects as well as introduction to Java and module three again you'll be learning regarding the classes inheritance and exception handling and module four regarding the packages and interfaces multi-threading programming and module five is regarding event handling and the swings so all these uh, three and a half module covers in the second textbook that is uh, the complete reference over here herbert shield and the first one and a half module is sour of sahai for the object oriented concept we are going to refer sour of sahai and for the for the java concept that is from the second module till the last module we are going to see the herbert shield textbook the java the complete reference seventh edition and the for the object oriented concept we can refer the sorrow side in addition to this you can refer the reference book balaguru swami for the c plus plus that is for the first one and of model so this is regarding the syllabus of the object oriented concepts the subject code is 18 cs 45 okay so this is regarding the object oriented concept syllabus so now let us go to the concept of the module one so before we go into the object oriented concepts in the module one we need to review, review the concepts of the structure it means what is the concept of structure we need to understand over here so as you all already seen in the c programming structure is nothing but structure in c is nothing but a user defined data type that enables us to store the collection of different data types okay structure in c is nothing but a user defined data type that enables to store the collection of different data type for example if if it is a student for example let us take an example of student okay let us take an example of student so what all things a student can actually hold so that student will have a role number okay a student will have a role number he has a name he has a name and for example he has a marks okay so th these are the different fields which a student contributes so you know that roll number is of an integer type name is of a string and marks you can declare it as a float so these are nothing but the different data types so a structure in a c in c is a user defined data type that enables us to store the collection of different data types for example in roll number character name or float marks so these are nothing but the data members of the structure data members of the structure data type and the members of the structure okay so over here let us see the structure definition over here how you are going to define the structure so you know that struct is the keyword struct is the keyword that you are going to use to define the structure and then you are going to give some name for example struct student struct student that is the name and data type what data type it is now for example here struct structure name that is let us assume that is student and then data type whatever is there so int roll number okay then care name and so on whatever you want to go you're going to define so this is the keyword this is the keyword and then you have the name name 
this is the name and then data type members are nothing but int role number char name okay so these are nothing but the this is the data type and this is the member and this is the data type and this is the member member 2 and then you are going to close when you are done with the definition of the structure and putting a semicolon so this is just a definition of the structure so you, i hope you remember the concept of structure it is nothing but collection of different data types collection of different data types and each element in the structure is called a member each element so these are nothing but the they are called as a member so this is the keyword to define the structure and this is the structure name and here you are going to define the data members okay so example over here i've given an example struct employee so this is a keyword this is a structure name and these are nothing but the data members or fields of structure so this is the data type and these all are the data members so this is regarding the structure definition as a simple example okay so next how we can declare the structure variable how we are going to declare the structure variable where you can de declare the structure variable so here we can declare a variable for the structure now you have defined this particular structure right now the, you have defined this particular structure for this to access the data i mean to access these members i need to declare a structure variable okay i need to declare a structure variable so where can i define the structure variable so we can declare a variable for the structure so then so that we can assess the member of the structure easily so there are two types to declare one is by struct keyword within the main function we are using the struct keyword within the main function if not by declaring the variable at the time of defining the structure so remember there are two ways to access the structure members that means to access the member of the structures we can declare a structure variable in two ways one is within the main other one other one is by declaring the time when you define the structure itself so let us see the example how you can declare those so for example struct employee this is what the, what is the structure you are going to define okay struct employee same thing so this is you're just uh, for example here you have written all ash include ash include standard io dot h io dot h and then you globally declare certain terms and then you define your struct okay so struct employee int id char name float so this is my structure definition once i have defined the structure over here then i wrote void main okay now when i define void main within that i'm calling this with this keyword so that is the meaning of the first one by struct keyword within the main function so struct employee same name i'm calling and then i'm declaring this variable structure variable now what is the use of these variables i can i can access the these now e1 e2 is nothing but the variables for this particular structure so i can access this id name salary using these variables that has been defined for the structure so one condition is you can define within the void main that is struct by calling struct employee and creating the variable so here i have created two variables you can create any number of variables here i have created two variables for any number of variables we can use this method this particular method for fixed number of variables if we know how many variables we are going to define then we can go with this particular method so the first method was within the void so what we did is void main within the void main so what we did initially i declared the struct within the void main i created the variables that is e1 comma e2 for the struct employee and then i can access i'll show the examples of how to run this particular program then i can access using the e1 and e2 variable the second method is struct employee struct employee again these fields itself here itself i am going to declare the variables within the structure itself not inside the void main here itself e1 comma e2 outside the main itself i am going to clear, declare the variables e1 and e2 so this is the two types or two different ways where we can declare a variable for the structure so that we can access the members of the structure easily so that we can access the members of the structure easily so one is by declaring the structure variable within the main function other one is there itself when you are going to create the structure there itself you are going to declare the structure variables now what is the structure variables you can what are the structure variables now in the structure variables you can access these fields now for example here itself you can give e1 dot id is equal to 100 and then you can do the printf i mean you can print up this particular e1 dot id you can print up this particular e1 id the output would be the output would be 
100. So nothing but accessing the members of these structures and assigning the values and you can use the print those statements. That's why we are going to use the structure variables. Whereas in the object oriented concepts, these variables are nothing but called as an objects. They are also called as instances of class. Okay. So this is an example of how you are going to access this structure. So we had seen the definition of this structure. We had seen the definition of this structure. Then how we are going to declare the structure variable. And then now we are going to see the accessing the members of the structures. There are two ways to access the structure members. There are two ways that you can access the structure member. One is by the dot operator. One is by the dot operator. Other one is using the structure pointer operator. So this, these are the two ways where you can access the structure members one is to the dot operator other one is to the structure pointer operator so let us see the simple example for this so we are I've declared ash include standard io dot h string dot h and then struct employee i've declared struct is a keyword employee is the structure name within that i've declared two fields int id and char name for an array set 50 over here itself i've declared now what is the what is the use of declaring over here itself the structure variable so in case if you know how many variables is uh, how many variables you are going to use for a structure then it is better to use over here itself now for example if you are using e1 comma e2 then it's better but in case if you don't know if uh, how many structure variables you are going to use it then it's better you define over here using that keyword what i've told over here that is struct employee e1 how many you don't know in case if you don't know then it's better to use over here in case if you know then it's better to use over here now over here int main so i've declared e e1 dot id is equal to 101 store first employee information this is just a printf how we are going to use the uh, assessing the members of the structure so dot 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 as well as the pointer so here i've used the concept of dot operator so e1 dot id i took e1 and i assessed e1 dot id e1 dot id i stored some integer value on not one and then again i want to use i want to get the name so what i do is e1 dot name i is equal to directly i can give if not string copy whatever what is the function uh, string copy doing whatever the name you have written it will be copied to this e1 dot name finally these two i am going to do the printing so printf employee one id percentage d slash in e1 dot id printf employee one name percentage s e1 dot name so you here you have to give structure variable whatever you have created by using the dot operator the members you are going to access so this is an example of how we are going to access the structure variables so accessing the members of the structure so here members is nothing but by dot operator so this is an example so this is for the one employee let us see for the both two employees also so this is regarding the one employee so what you did is you just created a struct employee within that you declare two data members or variables of the structure int id and char name and then you declared over here itself structure variable and it within the main you're going to access the structure member that is e1 dot id using the dot operator you're going to access and you're assigning one of one same thing for e1 dot name i use string fun string copy function and i copied these to e1 dot name finally i'm going to print these two statements so that is regarding this so let us run this particular program in the code blocks so this is how we are going to run the structure program what i've so shown in this slide so we are you're going to create a new project you're going to give a project name as structure and it is a c console so then within the main you're going to write the program so this uh, code blocks execution you already seen in the data structure laboratory in the previous uh, i mean previous semester so we are same concept in this code blocks itself i've written this structure program so in that again same program struct employee in id care name and then i've declared e1 over here itself within the structure itself i've declared the structure variable so e1 dot id and string copy so what will be the output of this particular program we'll run and just check so employee one id is 101 employee one name is nothing but sono jaiswal so you can see the output over here employee one id is 101 employee one name is sono jaiswal so this is regarding the execution of the first program of the structure so let us go back over here the next one is based on the two employees so same thing struct employee i have in tidy name three fields over here id name and salary and i have declared two 
structure variables. I have declared two structure variables within int. I have written e1.id. Then again, I have copied the string, I mean e1.name and then salary I have declared. Employee 2 details again I have filled. And then finally, I am going to print employee 1 ID, employee 1 name, employee 1 salary, and employee 2 ID, employee 2 name, and employee 2 salary. So, same concepts of the dot so instead of dot operator you can also use the arrow instead of dot operator you can also use the structure pointer operator also it works well and good here i have just shown you the how the other way where we are going to declare the structure variable within the structure itself when we can use this method when we know the fixed number of uh, structure variable we are going to define in case if we don't know how many structure variables we are going to define it's better we use the struct employee e1 comma e2 or any number of employees we are going to uh, uh, structure variable we are going to create over here itself so this is a basic example of the how we are going to access the members of the structures so this, these are the two programs so let us see the program in the code blocks so this is the same program what we have seen over there that is based on the two employees what you have created so e1 and e2 then we have fetched e1.id again e1.name e1.salary e2.id have declared and then we are going to print the both the employee details so let us uh, uh, compile current file and let us run this particular program so you can see the employee one id employee one name employee one salary employee two id employee two name and employee two salary so this is regarding how we are going to fetch the two employee details using the dot operator so this is regarding the example of assessing members of the structure so this was a basic definition of what is a structure how you're going to create a structure and then how you can declare the structure variable so there are two ways within the main as well as while declaring the structure itself and then how you can access the member just remember this you can access the members of the structures by using the dot or the structure pointer operator so most of the time we'll be using the dot operator next is regarding how we can create a new data type using the structure how we can create a new data type using the structure so we can create a new data type using structure by following steps okay so this is an example following is an example what is the concept is you have to you have to create a structure and you have to store it in a separate file that is in a header file okay this date.h is nothing but an extension of the header file that is date.h so with the you have to create a notepad and while you're creating a project for example uh, i'll write a project as date okay when you're going to create a date project over here you're going to create within this project you're going to create date.h there is an header file which includes which includes the structure definition so you can see over here struct date struct date which has date month year struct definition as well as the prototype prototype is nothing but the function function declaration that is for the next date and get date so this is included in the date dot h okay put the structure structure definition and the prototypes of the associated associated functions in a header now what is the concept over here how we are going to create a neat new data type using the structure so the first step one is you created an header file within that header file you define these two function declarations okay that is prototypes as well as the structure definition now this is done this is one step and in the second step what you're going to do is this data type whatever is being this acts as a data type whatever you have created right that will be included over here that will be included over here ash include date dot h now what is happening whatever the structure you have defined over here it will be accessed over here that's it whatever the structure you have defined over here now this is a structure what you have defined over here within the file name date dot h within the file name date dot h and this within the file name date dot h now over here i have defined struct date with these data members and these function declarations so that file itself i am including over here you have given the name as ash include date dot h so that file itself will be included over here then normal we are going to define the function whatever the prototypes we have defined over there those prototypes we are going to do the definition of those prototypes so that is one is this and one is this and then i have written the main function so let us see this pro program now put the definition of the associated function in a source code and create a library now within this now in entire uh, your date program right you will have two files one is date.h 
one is date dot h and one is this whatever the main dot c for this or date dot c Day, let us assume this program name is date dot, date dot c now within this is the date dot c within that i wrote ash include standard io dot h i also wanted to include the structured definition i mean whatever the structure i have defined as well as the prototype that is date dot h and then i am defining these two functions that is this is how we are going to define a function so void next date struct date star point p that is nothing but the structure variable over here is a pointer variable and then i have written here i have used the arrow operator so p arrow operator only the date is getting incremented so you can in this what is happening in this particular function this function is gets the next date okay this function gets the next date next date and this get date is nothing but just printing the displaying the content of the date displaying the date this function acts as just displaying the date and this just fetches the value of only date from your struct that means you have defined your date month here it the point of variable gets only the d that is date and it increments that particular date that's it okay so what we what we are going to do over here is in the second one we included the date.h file in a c program library and also we defined the function that's it so in this function i'm just accessing the date and i'm incre incrementing the date that's it in this void date get date i'm just displaying the date i'm just displaying the date so you can see the variable i'm defined over here is a pointer variable for the have you defined over here is a pointer variable for the next date and the get date so here printf date is percentage d percentage d percentage d how am i accessing again arrow operator so date month and year okay so this is a function now let us go over here i have defined over here struct date so you know this is one more way within the main i have defined so struct date that now this is a variable name of the structure now i need to fetch over here so over here i have used date dot d dot operator date dot d i have assigned as 16 okay date dot d i have assigned as a 16 date dot month is equal to 4 date dot year is equal to 2021 i have just put the values for the date month year now what will this next date do actually next date do so it will go to this particular function it will go to this particular function initially it will be p date is equal to you know the post increment job this value will be nothing but this value will be nothing but it was 16 right it will be 16 itself but when it comes out of this loop the p date will be 17 okay when it comes out of the loop the p date will be 17 so here the output will be 17 and then again this will be 17 and over here next is get date function so it will go to over here. this is nothing but the print of the date printing the date so it would be nothing but 17 month is 4 and year is 2021 so this will be displayed so what is the advantage of this now next what is the step 3 step 3 is nothing but compiling and running this particular program so this is what is a creating a new data type using the structure new data type is nothing but you're creating a separate file within which you're going to define the structure variables as well as the structure prototypes whatever the prototypes or functions you're going to use declarations you're going to use and that you're storing in the separate file date.h and that will be a new data type which will be included in this particular program just um, instead of write i can write over here itself whatever i've written over there i'm just giving an header file hash include date h which includes a new data type and then i'm defining these two functions and then i'm writing the main and step three is nothing but i'm compiling this particular program and checking for the output so let us see the execution in the code blocks so let us see the execution in the code box so this, so this is the same program what we have seen so compile current file so we are in this structures right i've defined main.c over here as well as uh, the header file is invisible actually so in header file what i've written is same the program whatever is there right uh, the struct keyword as well as the this function declaration so that i've included so that you can see in the back end uh, where in the notepad i've written within this folder itself so in this what i've done is i'm going to run this particular file now so you can see the date is 17 4 2021 you can see the date is 17 4 2021 so i had actually written the date as 16 only date got incremented so it will be 17 4 2021 so this is regarding the execution of the date program so let us come back over here so this is regarding the execution of the date program 
Now, you have, you have reviewed, uh, reviewed the entire structure concepts over there. You have reviewed the entire structure concepts. You, you learned the structure definition. Then you learned how to declare the structure variables within the main and uh, within the structure itself you can declare and how you can access the data members using the structure either dot or the arrow operator. So the, these were the briefs and how you can create a new data type in the structure. So these were the concepts what you have learned over there. Now let us come back to the procedure. Now we'll come back to the now we'll just go to the procedure oriented programming so according to this what do you mean by procedure oriented programming procedure oriented programming is nothing but the c program itself so c is called as the procedure whatever the c programming you have learned right it is called as the procedure oriented programming c is called as nothing but the procedure oriented programming in this procedure oriented programming if you had seen we have used all the functions we have used all the functions your total program is divided into function 1, function 2, function 3, many number of functions. If you have seen the previous example itself uh, in the structure, for I have used two functions that is uh, one is for the next date and the get date. So the programs is subdivided into function 1, function 2, function 3, function 4, function 5, so on. Okay, it is divided into function one all these so sub function so what is the advantages of the functions so if you use a function it's easy to identify an error so that is what we have seen in this for example if you had written 100 lines of code without an any function and in case if some location you found an error okay and you don't know which line number the error is there then entire program you have to trace and check for the error okay entire program you have to trace and check for the error and it will take a lot of time to do the execution i mean execution time takes more and in case if you have divided your program in terms of functions then it will be easy to identify the error then it can be easy to identify the error so c whatever the procedure oriented programming is nothing but the c itself your total program we are going to divide into the sub function okay so the basic approach we are going to do is nothing but you can see over here it is a top-down approach the basic approach we are going to solve the program is by using the top-down approach so either c is a function oriented program and it is also a function oriented program and it's easy to identify the error the major advantage of function is you can write once you can write once and you can reuse it many times for example the example of printf example is nothing but the printf so here in the printf you can write once the program printf you might have seen the printf function you might have used it many you have written once but you can use it reusability of the function is more so that is the one advantage in the function oriented program major advantage of the function is write once read many times one example for this is a printf statement but certain drawbacks are there in the procedure oriented programming also so that is nothing but the global data declaration i'll let you know what are the uh, drawbacks over here in procedure oriented programming system procedures are disassociated from the data and are not part of it now for example uh, if you just remember the program like some program you have written hash include okay hash include standard io.h I should include standard io.h and then within that you have declared int a comma b int a comma b and then again main okay within main int globally you have declared these statements main and within that main you have three functions imagine like sum um, product and division just imagine that you have three functions sum product and division okay over there you just declared these in the your main and then you just declare and then what is this these are nothing but the these are now you define this sum function product function and then division function so you have written certain set of quotes certain set of quotes certain set of quotes okay and this variables you have declared globally i mean a b you have declared globally now what is happening over here is in procedure oriented program procedures are disassociated from the data that means disassociated from the data means whatever the definitions you have written you are not declared locally you are declared globally they are not this data and this is they don't have any connection it's globally declared and this is defined over here okay so that is the meaning so what is the drawback over here data is not secure it can be manipulated by any function it can be manipulated by any function by see by declaring this globally this can be accessed by this function 
and this can be this data member can be accessed by this function this can be accessed by this this can be this accessed by this so what is happening over here which means that it is data is not secure and any function can change or destroy the data any function can change or destroy the data so that is the one drawback where data is not secure or like there is data is not being protected whatever the globally if you declare the data is not protected so that can be used by any function okay any function now this function one definition is for example sum okay something like sum addition of two numbers for that two variables i'm taking from this again over here division for that two numbers again i'm taking from this so what is happening over here the data is being used by this as well as this i mean whatever the data you have created is used by this and this so data is not secure so this is one of the drawback of the procedure oriented program procedure oriented program so to overcome this drawback object oriented programming is object oriented programming is used so i'll just brief of whatever we learn in the procedure oriented programming procedure oriented programming is nothing but the c programming itself here the total program if you generally recall the concept of c program it is divided into functions so what is the benefit of functions it is easy to identify the errors now for example without function if you write the uh, directly if you go on writing the underlines of code it's very difficult to find which line the error is there in case if you write in terms of function it's easy to identify a function and find the error so that is one advantage of the procedure oriented program and also the function reusability for example i have told regarding the example of printf and what was the drawback in case if i declare globally the data that can be used the global data can be used by any functions that have been defined over there so the data will not be secure and any function can destroy that particular data so this is the disadvantage of the procedure oriented program for this the data will be insecure right that's why the concept of object oriented concepts can so this is regarding the that was regarding the procedure now we are going to learn regarding the object oriented concepts so what was the major motivation factor for the object oriented programming is to actually the main was uh, to invent the object oriented approach is to remove some of the flaws that has been occurred in the procedure oriented programming and here the data is more secure whatever the Uh, data is there right now whatever the global data we defined over there here the data is more secure and that data is not being used by any other one anyone else okay whereas the function can be used but whereas the data cannot be used here the data is more closely to the function then it is more closely to the function than to the some some other functions so you can see over here in the object oriented programming right this object is nothing but now for example uh, you have seen the example of previous itself the sum uh, whatever we had written there for example int a b i had written right int a b then i told me within that i had sum function uh, then i had division function and then i had product function so within this i have done right so over here three things are there over here three that is one for sum definition one for the division one for the product so this is sum function definition this is division and this is product now instead of declaring this over here within this itself this is the function definition itself right here itself i'm declaring in table so this forms one object here itself i'm declaring the data member so this forms one object again here itself i'm declaring one here itself i'm declaring the data member so this forms object 2 again here i'm declaring the data member so this forms the object 3 so this is how we are going to create the objects now if you see uh, if you just want to understand what is an object object is nothing but it is an instance of class okay now before i tell class class is nothing but class is a collection of objects general example i can give you is, uh, is your class itself fourth semester fourth semester class okay fourth semester class so this is a class name fourth semester b that is fourth b okay so this is your class name within this how many objects are there for example let us assume there are 64 students okay so there are 64 objects why they are called as an object each object has its own features okay that is 64 students will have their own features so that's why now for example if i take one student as an object that is student 1 as an object he will possess a name he will have a roll number and what he can do he can do some function let us he can do the study 
we can study this is a function let us say and certain definition for this function now what is this name and roll number it is again a data member data member or variable name like you have seen data right this name and roll number of student 1 whether this name and roll number of student 2 is same no this will be for this and this study can function can be same for the other students also what they are doing okay so that is nothing but this is a class name fourth b is the class name so it has a collection of objects so that collection of object is nothing but 64 student so each student is called as an object so that object will have data members as well as the function so this is a general example i'm just giving you to understand so what will happen over here this student one has his own data this student one has his own data and this student one has his own data and they can come they can communicate through the functions but not through the data okay is it clear they can communicate through the functions but not through the data so this is regarding the object oriented concepts what you have learned this is regarding the object oriented concepts however functions of one object that means this fun object can assess the function of other function that means you can communicate between the functions but not using the data okay some of the features of the object oriented program is it gives more importance on data than procedures that's what i told right data is being secure over here it gives more importance on data then then the functions and your programs are divided in terms of, instead of functions in the c here it is divided in terms of the objects and the uh, approach it follows is bottom up approach okay it follows the bottom up approach and object or object oriented concepts may communicate within any functions over here so this is the concepts of the object oriented programming this is the concept of the object oriented programming now for example you can also give an example of uh, you're going to spa when you go to spa you buy certain items over there okay for example uh, you you'll buy pen okay the item is pen item is pen and then the quantity may be something around 10 and then price may be uh, uh, the quantity may be 10 and some price may be 20. price may be 20 rupees quantity means 10 pens you brought price may be 20 rupees and the amount will be what 20 into 10 it will be nothing but 200 200 amount you are supposed to pay so you went to spar you brought an item pen and then again you took a book one more item you took book and the quantity may be 5 the price may be 50 so it will be 5 into 5 250 rupees okay 250 rupees so this is the amount final amount you paid so this and this whether they are same no this belongs to a different and this belongs to different so this is considered as an one object and this is considered as an second object okay so this is an a objects and this is a b objects which contains the identity of a which contains the identity of the book which contains the identity of the pen so this is regarding the example of what do you mean by an object so this is the concept of object oriented so remember in the object oriented programming functions and data are binded together or linked together so that is nothing but the object functions and data members are linked together that is nothing but the objects the major drawback what we have seen in the procedure oriented programming is overcome over here by by getting the data member for each objects over here so and we are not going to share the data member instead we can communicate using the functions so this is regarding the object oriented programming concepts the next concepts is regarding the features of hoops so here you can see the features of two as class objects data abstraction and encapsulation inheritance polymorphism and message passing so already i have told regarding the class a class we had seen like for example add given uh, here we'll be just i'll give i'll be giving a briefing the features of O because in detail we'll be learning in the next session okay so as i have given the example of classes fifth semester okay fifth semester now what was this actually it is nothing but class is nothing but the collection of objects collection of objects now what are the objects in this particular fifth semester b section it is nothing but the students are the objects so a class is nothing but it is a collection of objects and whatever the instances of class is nothing but the objects okay instant object is nothing but the instance of the class class is the collection of the objects so this is one of the features of the oops objects is nothing but the instance of the class now for example uh, if fifth semester b section then we have student student one student two 
so these are nothing but the objects now what this objects possess actually they have some state as well as the behavior they might have the state as well as the behavior now what is the state again they might like the state is like uh, usn they might have their usn name color and then certain functions over there like they might perform uh, regarding uh, the study function or else like their marks function how to calculate the total average display so all these are nothing but the functions that they are going to possess over there all these are nothing but the functions so in details regarding the definition of the objects as well as the classes we'll see in the next session but just overall brief features of the oops i'll be giving over here so class is nothing but the collection of objects collection of objects so for this if i give uh, one name for example uh, other thing is like i can give like fruit okay this is one class now what will be the instance of this actually again there might be different types of fruit okay there might be different types of fruit for example this is a class fruit for this object will be fruit mango this is one type of fruit so this is and nothing but we we'll create an object mango belonging to the class fruit okay we'll create an object mango which belongs to the class fruit so here your class is nothing but it is nothing but a collection of objects so this mango is nothing but the object of class fruit and then objects is nothing but it is an instance of the class it is an instance of the class and they are nothing but the basic runtime entities in the object oriented system where in the objects in the programming system actually this actually occupies the memory whereas these doesn't it virtually occupies it actually does not store any space in the compiler so this is regarding the classes and the objects next is regarding the data abstraction and encapsulation what do you mean by data abstraction data abstraction is nothing but you are hiding the internal details and showing and showing the functionality is known as the abstraction okay abstraction refers to nothing but representing only the essential features without including the background detail or explanation for example when you get a phone call you can just see the number when you get a phone call you can just see the phone number and then you'll get the icon like whether to receive or off but what is the process behind that phone call we don't know so that is nothing but data abstraction so hiding internal details and showing only the functionalities which is required is nothing but the data abstraction what do you mean by data encapsulation okay so binding the code i mean binding the code and data together binding the code and the data together that means wrapping up of data and functions into a single unit encapsulation is nothing but data wrapping up of the data and the functionalities wrapping up of the data and the functionalities functions into a single unit is known as encapsulation okay the wrapping up of data and function into a single unit this is nothing but class itself data and function is nothing but class itself into a single unit is known as encapsulation data and encapsulation is most striking features of the class the data is not accessible to the outside world and only those functions which are wrapped this data is not accessible to the outside world they are accessible only to the functions which are wrapped in the class and they can access it so this is one of the best features of the data encapsulation okay so it is nothing but data and function wrapped into a single unit is nothing but data encapsulation and this data can be used by only one whichever the class it's been defined and cannot be used by some other class data abstraction is showing only the functionalities which is required and hiding the internal details that is regarding the data abstraction so these were the three features that is classes objects data abstractions and data encapsulation then we have the inheritance inheritance is the process inheritance is the process by which one object which objects of one class acquires the property of, of objects of another class inheritance for example there are certain features now for example we have parents okay then child then child so this is one particular class and this is one particular class so certain features of parents we we get it from them that is nothing but the concept of inheritance certain features of the parents a child gets certain features from the parents so that is 
in addition to the whatever the functionalities child possesses he, he gets certain features from his parents so that is inheriting the features from the parents so this is nothing but the concept of inheritance so inheritance is nothing but process by which objects of one class one class acquires the properties of objects of another class so the representation for example if i give an example of bird okay i'll give an example of bird so this is one one class okay this is one class it has certain attributes it has certain attributes like feather and it may lay egg lay eggs all these these are the attributes okay now birds again i can categorize into two two things agree one is flying bird one is flying bird and other one is non flying bird flying bird and non flying bird non flying bird so what is happening over here bird it has certain features like feathers lay eggs all these are the features or the attributes they are have but i can again categorize the birds into flying birds and non flying birds flying birds and non flying birds so in addition to these feathers and laying eggs in addition to the feathers and laying eggs it can it can inherit the properties of feathers whatever is there in the parents with the parents and lay eggs also both can do it okay both can do it in addition to this it can have its own attributes okay it can have its own attributes so it inherits the properties of like feathers it's come from pa a parent and lay eggs all these are nothing but the concept of the inheritance okay so this is an example of inheritance where you fetch certain properties from your ancestor okay we in addition to your properties so that is regarding the inheritance next concept is regarding the polymorphism now what is a polymorphism polymorphism is, is one task is performed by different ways one task one particular task which has been performed by different ways is nothing but the polymorphism for example i'll just give an example of addition function okay when you do addition in terms of uh, integer for example in integer then it will be like uh, 10 plus 2 is somewhere 12 in the middle is a 12 but same concept if you use if the operands are string if the operands are string then the operation would produce a third string by concatenation okay now if it was operative addition if you perform in in terms of string a b c d d f and then if you do the addition then it will just do the concatenation so your addition function is different addition perform uh, function is acting differently here it is acting differently so it is nothing but one task is performed by different ways now addition itself in integer it is performed this way in strings it is been performed this way got it so this is regarding the polymorphism so it's take able to take more than one form on an operation may exhibit different behaviors behaviors in different instances so it depends on the type data type being used in the operations so just remember that it depends on the data type being used in the operation next is regarding the message passing next is regarding the message passing so what is happening in the message message passing is nothing but communications between the functions communication between the functions so objects communicate with one another by sending and receiving information much the same as people message to one to another the concept of message passing makes it easier to talk about the building system the directly model or simulate their real world counterparts so this is nothing but where the objects can communicate with each other by sending and receiving the information where the objects can communication with each other by sending and the information between the each other okay so in the object oriented programming concept there are certain set of objects that can communicate within each other okay so this is regarding the features of the object oriented concept so one is regarding the classes so what is a class it is nothing but a collection of objects and then objects objects are nothing but the instances of the class instance of the class data abstraction and encapsulation data abstraction hiding internal details and showing only the functionality which is required encapsulation wrapping up the data and the function into a single block class that is data encapsulation inheritance getting the features from the parent in addition are features also that is regarding inheritance polymorphism one task which can be performed in different ways and then message passing where the communication takes place between the classes so that is regarding the features of the hoop the, the detailed explanation of these concept will be explained in the next further sessions thank you